Pablo Picasso once said that every child is an artist. The trick is remaining an artist as an adult. When I was asked to speak here, I thought to myself, okay, well, first of all, I hope they don't make me go last. Secondly, <laughs> uh, I need to figure out exactly what they mean by youth. And I've added a third one today, which is if there's gonna be a kid who does yo-yo tricks, uh, get his phone number in advance so you know what he's doing. Uh, so I asked a bunch of people, what is youth? How do you define youth? And I got a lot of different answers. Uh, people said, oh, well, youth, you associate it with athleticism. You associate youth with beauty. No, nobody said you associate youth with the mind. Um, so I said to myself, okay, JJ, let's check in with yourself for a second. Is youth age? Is it a, a, a span of numbers? Uh, is it two through 10? Because if youth is about age, I'm always gonna be younger than somebody, but at the same time, I'm always gonna be older than somebody. So if you've got two people, a 100-year-old man and a 99-year-old man, does the 99-year-old man youthful just because he's not 100? So then I thought, okay, well, if youth isn't a number, maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's a, a mindset. And so when I started thinking about that, I said, well, of course, uh, you, youth is undescribable. Youth is something that exists in your ideas, in your imagination, in your dreams. So I said, okay, let's check in with some youth then. And I said, all right, six-year-old JJ, what, is, what, what were your life goals at the time when you were six? And I thought long and hard, and I'm like, okay, well, they were easy. They were simple, attainable goals. They were things like build the best Lego car you possibly can, uh, kiss Brianna Anderson after recess, uh, <laughs> Stay up past 10 o'clock at night. So I'm happy to say I accomplished all of those goals before I turned seven. Uh, and now 29-year-old JJ, I thought to myself, okay, 29-year-old JJ, same question, what are your life goals? And 29-year-old JJ said stuff like making sure to pay the mortgage on time, uh, getting to sleep by 10 o'clock at night, uh, and avoiding Brianna Anderson at my high school reunion. <laughs> so... I said to myself, okay, well, now there's obviously a difference between six and 29. Uh, I believe I'm the oldest speaker here today. Uh, and the good news is, is I act more my age, 11 and a, or act more my shoe size than my age, 11 and a half. Uh, I'm easily the most immature person who's stepped foot on this stage today. And you'll see that in a little bit here. So uh, six-year-old JJ had an obsession with Legos. I love to build stuff out of Legos. I was over the moon when I saw them on the tables out there. I immediately went to them and started playing. And there's a box in my mom's basement that's labeled Do Not Throw. Now this box has survived floods. It survived uh, donation drives at church. It's even survived my mom's famous spring cleaning events. So I went and found this box pulled it out, inside all my old Legos are there. I dump them out because you can't pick out of a bin with Legos. You gotta see the whole thing laid out in front of you. And I played for three hours and built an amazing dune buggy. <laughs> it was out of this world great. It had 10 headlamps, it had a huge spoiler, it had an ejection seat. It was the coolest thing I've ever built. And I said to myself, that's a little bit about youth. It's allowing myself to be creative. It's allowing myself to have fun. It's allowing myself to dream something up and making that dream a reality. So now let's flash forward to the day before I'm supposed to give this event. Last night, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself and thinking, okay, well, what are you gonna say that's gonna, that's gonna grab everybody? Do you have a quote ready to go? Do you have something that's, that's just gonna make them go like, oh man, that was so awesome. And I thought to myself, no, I don't have any of those things, but I do have a pocket full of balloons. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys what I mean with these balloons. Now, there's three simple lessons that I feel are important when you think about youth. And the first one uh, is about something called mind rut. Now the mind rut is what happens when you get older and you get set in your routine and things aren't amazing anymore. Nothing uh, inspires you, okay? You end up with a balloon that looks like this. 
pretty boring, nothing fun about that. Now, Alison Gropnik, who's a uh, professor of philosophy at the University of California, Berkeley, says a child's mind is geared towards learning. It is a sponge waiting to take in anything that they find interesting or important that surrounds them, a lot like a balloon. So let's imagine that I'm going to fill this balloon with my ideas and creativity and anything like that, okay? I'm gonna get myself out of that mind rut. Now, when you're a child, it's easy to share your ideas with other people because it doesn't seem ridiculous. The idea of a velociraptor piloting the space shuttle is common everyday occurrences. <laughs> Those are things we accept as possibilities in life. Now, when you get older, that of course seems ridiculous. That in fact is making this noise. It's not very appealing. There's nothing really glamorous about the squealing that comes out. And it's because you're limiting your imagination. You're limiting the amount of stuff that can come out and be shared with the other world. Now, this also is the grimace you get from other people when you try and be creative or you think outside the box. A lot of times people go, ugh, yeah. Now, as a kid, the difference is you get to do this. You get to go, yeah! And you don't know where that balloon's gonna end. It comes rushing out as fast as it possibly can and it's just waiting to be filled up with brand new ideas and brand new dreams and everything like that. That's a youthful attitude. That's a young mind, okay? The sponge getting ready to soak everything in. Now, another thing that you can do with the balloon is you can take a balloon. And you can fill it with some air and you can tie it. This is my trick. I can tie a balloon. And now you've got a balloon that exists and it's easy to bounce around. It's easy to share with other people. You can keep it going in the air a lot longer than anything else. It's something that like I can tell right up front here, like you're waiting to pounce on this balloon a little bit and you're excited about it. Of course, who's not excited to play back and forth? It's like when you go to a concert and they throw a beach ball into the crowd and you're like, oh God, I hope that beach ball gets to me. I'm ready, I'm gonna open palm it. So uh, this weighs nothing. So why are we taking so much time to make sure that we don't have balloons in our mind? Why are we doing anything we can to pop those dreams? Why are we doing anything that we can to stifle creativity? It's just a waste of time because right now as a country, we value innovation. Innovation is just a fancy word for ideas. So um, a, couple, a couple of months ago, uh, I lost a very dear friend of mine uh, in a tragic accident, and uh, I've had a very difficult time dealing uh, with, with his loss, especially because he embodied the idea of a young mind. Uh, his name was Jared Nillis, and Jared Nillis was the type of young man who on his 24th birthday didn't ask for snow tires for his car, he asked for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action figures. Um, he would do things like seek out the coolest climbing tree and then proceed to climb it. <laughs> uh, while all of his other friends are standing on the ground wondering where he is, he's hanging like an orangutan from the highest branch possible. My, my favorite memory of Jared is his ability to seek out a child anywhere he was. He loved hanging out with kids because kids he, he loved the possibility of doing anything that he wanted, and kids really, really, really understand that. Uh, so he was coming to visit me in Chicago, and I received a call from him one night. And I hadn't even been able to say hello before he interrupted me and said, hey, Spider-Man, how are you doing today? And so I said, okay, well, fine, whatever. And he goes, listen, I met this kid. I'm at a, I'm at a work party. His name's Dylan. Would you talk to him for a second? Spider-Man. So I said, okay, well, whatever. And he handed this phone to this kid, and he, uh, Jared had convinced this young man that he was best friends with Spider-Man. <laughs> now, this young man, Dylan, was six years old. It was right after Spider-Man 2 had come out, and he was over the moon to talk about Spider-Man. He wanted to know about Dr. Octopus. He wanted to know how fast I could web sling, and he was most uh, enthusiastic about me coming to visit him at school. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be okay. My teacher said you can visit. Now, 
After I was done talking with Dylan, he handed the phone back to Jared. Jared simply said goodbye and hung up the phone. That's all it was. It wasn't uh, something special. All he wanted to do was let this kid talk to Spider-Man. Through the rest of my friendship with Jared, that happened another dozen times. Uh, I was everything from uh, Shrek to whatever Yo Gabba Gabba is. Uh, <laughs> and after the news of Jared's passing had reached all the towns and people he had been a part of uh, through the years, I got a call from Dylan's mom. And Dylan's mom told me that he had written a paper this last year as his best memory. And his best memory was being at a party and being bored to tears being the only kid until an adult found him, engaged him, and let him talk to Spider-Man. If we could all let people talk to Spider-Man a little bit more, wouldn't this world be just like a little bit better every day, just a little bit better? My favorite author of all time is Theodore Geisel. You probably know him better as Dr. Seuss. My favorite uh, piece of literature that Dr. Seuss ever wrote, and don't think that Dr. Seuss wrote books for kids. That is absolutely not what he was going for. He wrote books that were accessible to children, but had a message for everybody. My favorite Dr. Seuss book is The Lorax. And if you've never read The Lorax, do yourself a favor, check it out. It's a phenomenal story. It's a prayer for environmental protection. At the very end of the story, our main character is talking to the Onceler, a person who's completely pillaged a land and robbed it of its beauty because of his greed. The Onceler points to a rock in front of his home, and on this rock is carved the word unless. Our main character asks, what do you mean by unless? And he says this quote. He says, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Now, Dr. Seuss was using that to talk about the environment, but I'm challenging you to do that with your imagination, your creativity, and with the person sitting next to you and their imagination and their creativity. One of the best ways we can help each other is by saying, what did you think of today? What are you drawing? What's going on? What did that song make you think about? And have them just explain it. People love to talk about their ideas when they feel safe. Make yourselves available for people to feel safe. And let them hear your brilliant ideas and your great stories and things like that. That is the value of a young mind. So many companies nowadays are imposing things like mandatory recess. Now, I don't know about you, but mandatory recess seems like uh, an oxymoron. <laughs> it seems like something that you shouldn't be forced to do, but companies are forcing their employees to get out and to socialize, to bounce a ball, to read a play, to grab some Legos, because they're trying to get your mind rut out of that state and into that flexy, spongy mold that a young mind has because that's where fresh ideas, fresh innovation, and fresh dreams are going to come from. Uh, some of the best adults, I think, who are dreamers are people like uh, Robin Williams. Uh, Steve Jobs was a dreamer. My personal favorite, Jim Henson, was a dreamer. He even wrote a song with Paul Williams for Kermit the Frog to sing about dreamers. If you haven't heard it yet in a while, take a listen. It's fantastic. So when it all comes down together, I think we need to say to ourselves, a young mind is way more valuable than we're giving it credit for. So if you feel like being a little goofy, if you feel like being a little bit silly, if you feel like letting your imagination run away, go for it. Because it can only bring great things in the future. Now, a couple of you, uh, uh, Bo helped me out, and a couple of you were given balloons uh, before my talk began. If you've got one of those balloons, do me a favor. Uh, blow some air into it. Don't tie it, but just hold it shut like that. I'll do the same up here. And uh, as my goodbye to you folks tonight, I want to show you exactly what a crowded room full of ideas and dreams can look like. So on the count of three, would you please release your balloon and your ideas into the environment? One, two, three. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>